Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Casey, and I'm chilling right here on You Know I Got Soul. I know you got soul, so keep it locked right here. All right, so new album coming out soon, Heaven's Door. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk about the name. How'd you come up with the name? Um, Heaven's Door came from, I mean, I, I was getting a bunch of songs together. It was my first time getting back into music, and it kind of felt like I was, it, my personal life was cool, everything was where I wanted it to be, so it was kind of like I was at the, the door of my own personal heaven. And that's what we came from. Okay. And you know, this is your first album in, I believe, five years. So, mm -hmm. what took you so long to come back with a new one? And how did you know now was the right time? Well, I don't know that now is the right time, yeah. but I actually started not to make any more. Okay. Because, I mean, the way that things are now, it's like I kind of get to the point where I don't want to do music no more okay. as a job. Yeah. I mean, I, I still love music, but to do it as a job, sometimes I'm like, fuck it. I don't want to do it no more. So I hope I can curse. Cause I just yeah. did. Go ahead. But um, yeah, I mean, and and uh, with this album, it was just like, okay, this this is what I've been doing. I, I got back into making music again, and I was like, okay, let's go, let's have some fun, and then um, let's go. Yeah. So I spoke to Jenny Why not too long ago, and he said the same thing. He doesn't really like the studio anymore. He mm -hmm. likes performing on stage. He likes doing mm -hmm. all that. So yeah. Um, is that something that you're content with just touring? Because you have a catalog of hits. And you could probably just do that for the rest of your life. I mean, I don't know if I'm content with it because I always have that itch to go do new stuff. Um, but if it come, if it came down to, you know what it is? It's like the business of making music, to some extent, it, it kind of took away my joy of music, okay. if that makes sense to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like the business of it. It's the music business. You know what I mean? And I didn't get into it for the music business. I got into it for the music. Yeah. But, which was probably fucked up for me. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? So a lot of times, I mean, it, it just depends how I'm feeling at the time. Just like I went for like a few years without without ever going to the studio. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then I was like, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm in the studio now, and I'm liking what's happening, so let me put this out. And that's, that's how it goes. Okay, cool. So going back to your new album, who did you have a chance to work with on this album? Um, I'm working with Tim and Bob, uh, my man Mike Snotty, Carvin from Carvin and Ivan. Uh, ooh, I know I'm going to forget somebody. I always mess up on this part. Um, uh, there's people that, uh, just a bunch of people. And I love all y'all. Don't judge me. <laughs> and uh, you and Tim and Bob, you guys have a great chemistry. You guys yeah. have done a lot in the yeah. past. What's your chemistry like in the studio with them? With Tim and Bob? Yeah. Tim and Bob is the, is the best chemistry I've ever had with any producer out of anybody I've ever worked with. And I've worked with Jam and Lewis. I've worked with a bunch of people. And it's like, with them, I have the best chemistry. And, and we we about to go ahead and do some more stuff okay. for, for potentially the next album. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah, that, I have the best chemistry with them. It's like they understand me and what I'm trying to do, and I understand them and what they're trying to do, and it just, it just matches up so good. Yeah. And as far as new music, when can we expect it, like a new single? Uh, hopefully soon. Okay. It's in 2014. Hopefully in the next month or so. Well, actually, we leaked a single called Damn Girl, yeah. and then... After that, I got, I got some other stuff for you. So. Okay, cool. Hopefully now, sooner than later. Yeah. <laughs> now, I just wanted to take a look uh, back a little bit. You were part of the whole Def Soul mm -hmm. era. It was yourself, Montel Jordan, mm -hmm. Kelly Hill, Price, Kelly Price, music, Playa. Music, so music, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, just take me back to that whole era, that whole experience. Was it, uh, was it a competition between you guys, or were you guys all friendly, or how was that like? Actually, it was both. It was a friendly competition. Okay. And the thing I liked about it is it, it reminded me of what I heard that Motown was. Okay. You know what I mean? It was a friendly competition, and it was like, you know, we cool, we hang out, but I'm going to try to outdo you. Yeah. And I love that shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, that's that's what music is to me. Like, even being on stage with people, it's like, I'm going to outdo you. Yeah. And after the show, we can hang out, we have drinks and all that. But, yeah. and to me, for me, it was my version of Motown. Oh, okay. So I loved it, because okay. it was like... We was competing with each other, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying, we was all family. Yeah. You know what I mean? I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Did you ever get a chance to work with Playa at all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did. We Actually, we did a song with Kelly Price right. Right. Um, for Breast Cancer Awareness. Right. It, was, it was a charity song. Oh, it, was, it was me, Playa, Drew Hill, uh, Montel Jordan, um, Candace Love. Yeah. Um, um, Love Her. It was a bunch of us. We yeah. did. We did um, I can't remember the name Set of it. Set you free, right? There you go. Yeah. See, I fuck with him. Yeah. <laughs> he knows the stuff. Yeah, I can't remember that shit for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I just wanted to take it back a little bit again. Back in 2001, you had the huge single, Missing You. Mm -hmm. And then you also had a huge song with Ja Rule. So yeah, I felt like after <laughs> that, you got nominated for two Grammys. Yeah, I felt like after that, that should have taken you to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, looking back at that situation now, is there anything you could have done to, you know, reach your full potential after that? Nah, because you know what happened right after that is that I, I left. Matter of fact, I went to the Grammys in February. I got nominated for a Grammy for Missing You. And nominated for a Grammy with, for living it up. Yeah. And right after that, that was in February. I moved to Atlanta in September. Okay. No, October. Okay. And I just stopped doing it. Like so. I mean, I mean, for me, it was it was me doing what my heart told me to do. Yeah. So I mean, full potential. I mean, I've, I've heard that, but yeah. I mean, it's like I mean, I got to do what I feel. Yeah. You know what I mean. And uh, just a couple of songs that I wanted to ask you about, some of my personal mm -hmm. favorites. Um, the song If. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk about that song a little bit. Um, if is a situation I think a lot of people have been in. It's like uh, it's like being in a relationship with somebody and it's kind of like you don't know. It's, you know that you know that in between stage where it's yeah. like, I mean, do you like me? Do you not like me? Yeah. And if so, then do this. If not, do this. Yeah. And that's that's that was the whole uh, concept behind If. Okay. And then, uh, what do you remember about recording the collaboration with R.L., Tyrese, and Genuine? Best man I can be. The, the thing I remember most about that is that I was, like, I, I was a little bitch. Oh. Because we <laughs> did it with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Yeah. So, I'm like, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> and I remember that when I got to the studio, they was like, okay, that's who we've been waiting on, to put that grin on it. Yeah. So, they wanted me to put my soul on it. And, and what that told me is that they respected what I, what I did. Yeah. And I so, so very respected what they did, so yeah. that kind of made me feel like real good. Cool. And then uh, the last one is Should Have Known Better. Haha, <laughs> Should Have Known Better is yeah. something that I think a lot of people have been through. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that was like one of my one of my favorite artists ever. Probably my favorite artist is Michael Jackson. Okay. And um, Should Have Known Better has a lot of the influence for that song came from the Jacksons. Okay. And so that, that was like my kind of nine to the Jacksons and, it, and it, it, it was just talking about something that I think a lot of people have been through yeah. like you should have known better yeah. you should have known better before yeah. <laughs> you too <laughs> uh, did you happen to work with the Neptunes on that song because it sounds sort of Neptune-ish no you know what I worked with the Neptunes about two weeks after that okay um, I worked with the Neptunes on uh, uh, what's the LL Cool J song um, Love You Better Love You Better oh. I did Love You Better oh, okay. you did that no <laughs> I'm tell you what happened. I did love you better. Okay. I still have it in my iPod actually. Okay. But they ended up using the version, the demo version of it. Yeah. But that part of it was politics. And I ran into Pharrell a month after that, and we was about to have it out. He was like, "It wasn't me." And I, and, and I understand that it was. I, I, and that's that's the type of thing that I'm talking about that made me just say, like, I don't even want to do it. Okay. Cool. So, you know, you've been in the industry for a minute now, mm -hmm. a lot of great success. What do you want people to remember about Case as an artist? Um, it's funny that you asked me that because it's, I want them to remember the same thing that I wanted them to remember when I first started. Somebody asked me that question. Yeah. And what I want them to remember is that I made music that you can listen to now when I make it, and hopefully you can listen to it in 20 years after, after, after the fact. Just like you can listen to Touch Me, Tease Me in 1996, yeah. it's That's 2004. True. Two more years, I make it to 20 years. Yeah. No, I, I still listen still to it. Like, I still listen to yeah, it. On a... We need two more years. <laughs> and that, that's always been my goal. Yeah. Like My goal was never to make money. It was never to make uh, to win Grammys. To do. My goal was to make music that people will appreciate. Because for me, like I love Motown. Like If you look at my iPod, I have Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Elton John, Motown. Jackson 5, Marvin Gaye have all that stuff, and I wanted to be in that category. So, two more years, I'm going to call you. <laughs> two more years. Cool, and uh, you know, that's all that I had for you. Anything you'd like to add? No, I just want to say thank you to everybody that supported me all these years, and I appreciate it. And um, uh, Heaven's Door is coming, uh, and uh, hopefully you'll like it. You know what I mean? And that, that's it. That's it, man. I just love everybody. <laughs>